I'm going to do something kind of fun today. I'm going to modernize an old recipe. And to make a long story short, I mentioned in a kitchen vlog that I had rabbit in my freezer that I wanted to use up. Someone sent me a YouTube link to a series of videos about cooking back in the 18th century. And what they would do is in this kind of restoration village, or maybe it was a preserved village in Virginia or West Virginia, and wearing period costume, they would do these old recipes showing how people cooked and ate back in the 1700s. This is called jugged hair, and it's jugged because they would use something like this a jug, a ceramic jug, and they would put their rabbit or their hair pieces in there along with their herbs and whatever else, some liquid, mirepoix, whatever, seal it really well on top, put in a, a big pot of hot water, let it simmer up against the fire in the fireplace for two or three hours so it was all tender and ready to eat. Well, I don't have a fireplace. So, but what I do have is an instant pot, and you can do this in a crock pot because I'm just going to use my instant pot like a slow cooker. You can even do it on the stove. You could do it in a, um, a nice pan. Uh, you could even put pan inside of a pan, put some water in the bottom of the out outer pan and put it over a, like a simmer burner. You might have to add a little bit of water to the outer pan once in a while and just slow cook it that way. And you could do this with chicken. I'm using rabbit, which is kind of expensive, $7.99 a pound. What is chicken? 99 cents a pound? You can get it lower, less than that on sale when stores are putting it on sale. So, um, But that's what I want to do today. I'm going to modernize this recipe for jugged hair, and I'm going to call it slow cooked rabbit. I've got a skillet heating on the stove into which I'm going to pour maybe a couple, three tablespoons of cooking olive oil. Okay, that looks like it's shimmering a little bit, so it might be ready to um, brown my rabbit. Yeah, there it is. Get that oil mixed around. Just gonna lightly brown my rabbit pieces. What I have here is about uh, three pounds of rabbit, 1.4 kilograms. I probably won't be able to get all of this in that pan. Maybe, maybe not but I can brown these in two batches. So I have my Instant Pot ready to load. Yes, I'm using a plastic liner. Some people freak out about that, but if you drink bottled water, it often comes in plastic. So evil, evil. <laughs> so here's my browned rabbit pieces. I'm gonna put those in there. Just They're just lightly browned. I didn't do any kind of dark browning on there. So just kind of lightly browned. Get those all loaded in there. And by the way, if you have a whole rabbit, you just want to section it into pieces. Whatever will be easy to work with as far as getting the pieces into your crock pot or whatever you're using. Okay, seasonings in here. I saw in the video a neat idea. Rather than cutting up an onion and putting it in there, they took an onion, medium, smallish onion, and then they studded it with whole cloves. And the idea is when you go to pull this out later on, you pull out the cloves with it. You don't have to fish out all the little individual cloves. And then I have one carrot that I've chopped up. One stalk of celery that I've chopped up. This is what do they call us, a bouquet garni. This is about maybe 10 sprigs of fresh thyme and about four or five sprigs of fresh marjoram from my little herb garden outside. One bay leaf, I have two small bay leaves left. So there's my one bay leaf. I have a nutmeg pod here. I'm going to grind or grate some nutmeg in there. Maybe, uh, I don't know, a quarter, eighth, one eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of fresh grated nutmeg. Or if you have it in the little bottle, 
you can use that. And then um, I'm going to put in a pinch of salt. I didn't salt the rabbit before I browned it. I don't want too much salt. I don't like a lot of salt. Then I'm going to grate some black pepper in there. Okay. I'm going to add some liquid to this pot. So I'm going to put in about half a cup of chicken stock or chicken broth. I'm using some Swanson chicken broth. This is low sodium. I'm going to put that in there. And then you can add some white wine. I'm going to actually add some vermouth because I used to watch these cooking shows, Two Fat Ladies. They were done by the BBC and they used vermouth a lot of times rather than wine. All right, put that in there. And then if your rabbit came with the giblets, in this case, uh, heart, liver, etc., you can set these aside because I'm going to use those later on when I make the sauce. I think that's everything. Make sure pieces are down there. Seal up my bag a little bit. This bag doesn't have to be tightly sealed because I'm not going to be using pressure cooker. I'm just going to do slow cooking like you would in a crock pot. But I'm going to seal it up with this little kind of like a zip tie that came with the liners there. That's all. Put a lid on top. You can use the regular instant pot lid. Set the vent to venting. I'm going to use this because, again, I'm not pressure cooking. I'm slow cooking. So I'm going to press slow cook. It's set to more. I don't want it to be more. Less. I'm going to set it to medium. And it's set for five hours, which is good enough. I'll let this go. And there it is. It's starting to work. The timer on this went off a few minutes ago. So I'm going to turn it off. And then I actually extended the cooking time on this a couple of hours because it took so long to come up to full temperature that I thought it should need to cook longer. And then what I'm going to do, a couple things here. I'm going to open this up. And I want to show you how easy it is to remove those cloves rather than picking out all the whole cloves. You just lift out the onion and there are all the cloves. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort through this. I'm going to take out the um, rabbit pieces, set those aside. I'm going to strain the liquid because I'm going to reduce that liquid and use it as a sauce. I put the giblets that came with the rabbit in that liquid. I'm going to reduce this down quite a bit, at least by half. And then I'll taste it for salt, season it if I have to. And then these giblets, I'm going to grind those up in the sauce to make like a giblet gravy. It won't really be a gravy because I'm not going to add any flour. It'll just kind of be like a sauce. So there's my liquid with my giblets in there. I ran that through a little strainer like this to get rid of the, they call it the, the scum. And using an immersion blender, I don't know how well this is gonna work, but what's the worst that could happen? And there is my sauce. Let me taste that and see how wicked it tastes. Set that aside. Where's my spoon? My infamous red handle tasting spoon. It's going to have to go in there twice, so I don't want to dip it twice. Once it's in my mouth. That does not need any salt. 
but that is good. And you can taste that liver, which is what I wanted. All right. I'm going to put a couple of rabbit pieces on this plate. Some of this rabbit is so tender that it's falling off the bone. And then, in the meantime, I cooked up one of my favorite vegetables, Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I know, they're evil. Evil! And toward the end of the cooking time, I added some sliced mushrooms. I know those are going to need a little pinch of salt. So I'll just lightly salt that. Doesn't need much. And then finally, put my little sauce on top. And there it is. Slow cooked rabbit. The last step is to see how good that tastes. All right. I really want to see what this tastes like. I can tell it's tender. It's got a nice herbal flavor to it from those herbs that I put in there. It almost has like a hunter, a hunter flavor to it. Like there are dishes that are called a la hunter or something. Like when they hunt for game. Oh, that is good. And of course I love Brussels sprouts, but I've never made Brussels sprouts with sliced um, mushrooms. <laughs> All right, excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy a late dinner of slow cooked rabbit with pan fried Brussels sprouts and sliced mushrooms. <laughs>